Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Talk With T. So my guest today is a neuroscientist by day and you can find her on the track by night. She's a 400 meter sprinter with a personal best of 52.6 and it's none other than Mary Abici. Catch her in a moment. Welcome back, and I'm here with the lovely Mary. Hello. So Mary's a very, very interesting person. So not only is she a British 400 meter sprinter, she's also a neuroscientist. neuroscientist yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. she just finished her masters. Yeah. So how did that go? It went pretty well. Yeah. It went pretty well. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It went pretty well. Learned a lot. Yeah. Learned a lot, a lot about the course. Yeah. Um, about the brain. Yeah and about human beings essentially and um, actually being more compassionate okay. when it comes to human behaviour and oh, wow, that's really human, yeah, yeah. human um, choices. Um, also I learned, learned a lot about myself yeah. as well. Learning to speak for myself, okay. oh, that was a big one. <laughs> um, it has been challenging in areas, has been challenging in areas, especially um, in academia, yeah. there's quite a lot of black women What made, what made you choose that that area? Like, what did you study at uni and then so, uh, the and so then? six years ago, or was it seven years ago, I did uh, biomedical sciences. Yeah. Actually, it was ten years ago, so I started my <laughs> biomedical sciences uh, degree um, at UCL. And literally, the aim at UCL was, you know, to do biomedical sciences and then hopefully get into medical school. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout those three years, it was really turbulent because that was the year where I was estranged from my family. Um, so I literally was living by myself, wow. and um, it was it was crazy because it not only was it like a lonely place, but it was also a place of forcefully trying to find yourself in a sea of chaos. Wow. You know, in in the, in the real world that you have been so shut out from. Because when I was a kid, I didn't really have much interaction outside of the real world um i didn't really like didn't have much you mean like you didn't really go out yeah or, okay. well i wasn't allowed to yeah, go okay, out yeah, yeah, i yeah. wasn't allowed to go out there yeah. was a lot of things like i my first bowling session i've ever had an opportunity to do oh really yeah i've never oh, been yeah, yeah that you know and cinema was like really mainstream okay. then so there's a lot of stuff that i was shunned out from yeah um and it's not until after uni or during uni was I experiencing yeah. all these things which were really new to me but then being estranged from my family it was quite difficult to find myself yeah. um, during that time so after that for the five years that I was out of uni I was looking for a job but then I found that the jobs that I was doing wasn't stimulating enough um, and then it started affecting my mental health and I started, I had depression, I had all kinds. <laughs> um, so it was very difficult to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And I realized there was a lot of things that I didn't know mm -hmm. about the world. And to an extent, I would say that I was like really ignorant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to one uh, psychotherapy session. And the more I learned, and the more I spoke, and the more I didn't know, the more I became more interested in what's going on in the mind and in the brain and what essentially is in my head, you know, because at, at the end of the day, you know, what's up there is essentially you. So if you to get to understand and know yourself, you might as well get to understand this organ in your head. So after, once I started studying it, I realized actually this is really and truly what I want to go into and what I really want to research and understand and understand the mind. Because I think once you understand that, you can always untap, like, on your potential in any way, you know. And it's also, you know, learning to be compassionate towards other human beings. Because, like I said, the brain, the chemistry, the, chem the patterning, the way it's wired, all contributes to the person that you're seeing. And sometimes there are certain behaviours that are not helped 
video is not to take away the responsibility from the person, but it's to understand where this person is coming from and being able to talk to them or guide them or be there for them at least, you know, when they're in time of need without judgment, without, um, you know, control, anything like that. You allow them to blossom freely, you know, the way they should, you know. So um, that, that was a very critical part, yeah. Wow. So for you, so you just finished your master's. Yeah. So that was at one year? Yes, yeah, one year. One year. Um, what do you want to do from this point? So with uh, neurosciences, the aim was to do neurosurgery and pediatric neurosurgery. Um, so obviously I have to go back into medicine. Well, not go back, go into medicine. Okay. Um, study for four years, another four years, and then um, hopefully practice in the hospitals. Um, there's that, but I also want to do a PhD while still in medical school. So I really want to be a part of the whole research program. And um, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, literally find out stuff so that, like, especially for communities where we don't know black people are interested in research, you know, um, understanding about the black mind in a sense, right? Like, all black culture, not that it's different, but in terms of how our cultures and how this impacts us, you know, especially when we have gone through a lot of struggle. How much does, like, in terms of the, the course, like, the area of study, like, itself, in terms of the course, how much does it really focus on in terms of cultural aspects? Not at all? No. Okay. You know, even like when they do like, uh, so they do like genome-wide um, association studies, it's literally not, they don't have a, a lot of um, studies or data for like African cultural things okay. such as or even genome, you know, African um, genome, uh, I don't know. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think that's such a privilege that we need to be open a lot, especially when it comes to understanding like, our culture. Wow. Yeah. There's so much I want to ask in this area, but I want to like now go, how does this, yeah. I, wanna, I, I will probably come back to this area yeah. again, but how does this and athletics, how do these two, how does one be in like neuroscience and then yeah. also be an athlete and, okay, so you, Kind of just shared your, you kind of shared the why of how you got into this area of your yeah. of Mary. How? What is the why? How? Why did you start athletics? And when uh, did that happen? When? Well? Okay, so I I didn't like start athletics. Well, I when I was in year four, year three, yeah. we had like the school fun run, okay. and um, I remember my teacher saying, "Oh yeah, you'll be good. You're, yeah, you go and do it." I said, "Okay, fine." So. I remember when we were on the start line and it was like one big circle <laughs> and me being because I have brothers and we're all really competitive okay, and we yeah. you know like when you're young you just play yeah. fight that's all you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I feel like I had that drive in me when I were when I when they started the when they started us on the start line and um, the gun went off all I knew was I need to get there first yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I literally ran off, I ran off year three and I won it and all my teachers were like, oh my gosh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and they were like, okay, you're going to do it again next year. I was like, oh, I don't have a choice in this, this is great. <laughs> so year four did exactly the same thing. And then for, and I started off like doing cross country runs. And then uh, when I went to, so that was primary school. Was this all in, like, in school? Because you spoke about not really having allowed to do... The, yeah, the, so this was all in school. To, okay, this yeah. was all in school. Okay. Yeah, it was not outside okay, school. Cool, yeah. Oh god, if I talk about the uh, athletics like outside of my house. Yeah, you can share that after. So yeah. just kind of carry on where you were going. And then yeah. So year five, year six, year seven, year eight. Um, I was one of the fastest in my year. So I was in middle school, uh, middle school at the time. Yeah, and we did like loads of runs there, and I think that really cultivated my um, love for running. Then um, during that time, I remember being in uh, secondary school, and I remember one of my teachers, Miss Murphy. Um, she used to take me to uh, all these cross country competitions. Okay. And, so it was uh, still cross country at the yeah, time. Yeah, it was yeah, still yeah. cross country. Yeah, oh God, I did not like <laughs> it. It was so painful. I remember running through the mud. I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and then um, I think it was not until year nine we did the indoor. Um, what was it? The sports hall. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was 
the full like run. Yeah, okay. I absolutely loved oh, it. Yeah. That that was good. I only had one year when we went to like the um, I think it wasn't like UK school games, but it was the next stage up yeah. from like the uh, nationals. And I remember doing that and I didn't know it was a time trial. So you know when you're young and you just start you're like, Oh I'm first. <laughs> oh, let me just jog to the line. Oh I see, yeah. So I came first, I was like, Yeah, I'm first and I jogged to the line. And then they're like, oh yeah, you came third overall. So like, well, I won my race. What? Because oh, no. <laughs> you're just thinking about yeah, winning that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that was my experience of loss, yeah. which was my fault. <laughs> but um, how did that drive you? Yeah, no, it really drove me to the next competition. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to to win. But one of the things when I was a kid as well is that I didn't have the support yeah. from my parents. Um, First, they didn't see athletics as a big thing, mm-hmm. but they didn't see a lot of things as a big thing. Mm-hmm. I think, especially as a woman in an African household, especially Nigerian household, um, my family in particular, I don't know how it's like now or for other families mm-hmm. back then, but my, my parents didn't really see me as a cheater. They just saw me as someone that was gonna be a housewife okay. for a, a man who paid the best price that was well, even a, what even in your academics they, it was not really yeah, it okay. yeah. no it really wasn't um no they don't really see my academia mm-hmm. as because again there's that culture of you know you're going to take your husband surname so you're not us mm. essentially you're not going to be us mm. so they don't really see or value anything that i did as substantial wow. uh, no how did that affect did. you as a child um, really badly yeah. because I think sometimes it even affects me now because mm. you go through this mindset of constantly trying to prove yourself mm. to your parents yeah. or to people in authority so you're constantly looking for approval because you didn't have that as a childhood mm. you know you didn't have that nurturing as a childhood so any small bit of nurturing you got from someone it's like, oh, 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 like yeah, 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 yeah 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 until you learn I think till recent years for me, I've learned how to like nurture myself and be my own parent um, where there was gaps. And even I would I would sit there and study parental books on how to bring up kids. Yeah, for myself. For myself. Because it was like, there was an inner part of me, that inner child that was still looking for, you know, that parental nurturing, that love, you know, the... Was there anyone in your life that you... You, I mean, maybe even now, is there anybody in your life that you feel like can kind of take that role or anything like that, or can help fulfill that role? The biggest person that's helped that role is my friend Adam. Um, so how did you get through that season? What was that season like? 
it was it was crazy it was hard yeah i think I, sometimes i look back at myself as a child i'm just thinking how, how did you do it yeah. you know we're I, talking 16 17 18 18, 18 and like even like 19, 19 yeah. yeah so 18 yeah was when i left home oh, wow. so it was it was really hard i my ambition and my goal which was literally the central focus was to get out of here and i knew that i had to get good grades okay. to get to out yeah i had to get good grades i had to do well in athletics there was a lot that a lot of pressure that i put on myself wow. because wow. if i didn't can you imagine the devastation yeah. wow. but there was a lot of resilience you know a lot of resilience um so i would i would leave the house for around six o'clock in the morning yeah. and i'll be in the library till 10 yeah. and come back I used to come up to Enfield and Harrogate when we used to train together. Yeah. And yeah, coming back home, I used to like jump over the, um, the gate because I used to lock the door, knowing fully well that I was out. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> and they'll never call me to ask where I'm at. They just, they just didn't care. Whatever happened, happened. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I used to jump over the window uh, to get to athletics, to train, to go to, to do work, yeah. to do what I needed to do, which, Usually parents will be like, will be really encouraging of their kids to be to do well in academia. When did you actually? Because obviously I remember when you came, like you started coming to me River, but when did you actually start athletics outside of school? Um, so I outside of school, I didn't come back till twenty two. Okay. So I left. I left athletics at eighteen. Yeah. And came back twenty three. Yeah. Okay. So no. So I I remember that, but because obviously you were at you were before that twenty two. Yeah, remember yeah. there was a period yeah, you, like yeah. when you were young like 16, yeah. when, I can't remember 16, 17 whatever yeah. you were in athletics I know that there was a break so I'm not talking about the break when you yeah. did do athletics I'm talking about when not you weren't just doing like when you started competing or like even yeah. when you went to like um, oh when I started going to competitions yeah yeah so I used to just so I used to just tell my parents I'm going out to a competition but they just there was no response okay. or I'll just go to a competition okay. they wouldn't know so you started that, but I'm trying to gauge when you actually started doing competition outside of school, just to get a rough idea. Oh, uh, probably around, so outside of school, about 16, about when, 16 I, yeah, when I, when I, yeah, when I, Because you, you went to, is it UK School of England? I can't remember what it was called, but you yeah, went Yeah, I went to, to England, yeah, yeah, so I went, I, so I went to, um, I went to English schools, yeah. two years, but that my teachers, my teachers at the time really had to push it. Okay. And also, my friend's family, because I used to hang around with them quite a lot. Okay. They used to take me to the competitions, they used to pay for some of the competitions, my school used to pay for some of the competitions yeah. as well. Um, <coughs> even 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 with my math maths quiz quizzes, because I was I remember being like the top in maths and my parents didn't want to pay for it and my school ended up paying for it just so I could represent them. Um, so yeah, the competition was through school and okay. my friends, yeah. So, okay. So go back to what you're saying, so we're talking about the season, so obviously you kind of shared what it was like, the struggles, um, yeah. but, so you had to, the pressure, that's what I'm saying, well, because you just think, like, I guess everyone listening as well, you can just start putting yourself, you can just imagine how much, right, you already, you already feel like, I don't, like, okay, just putting it raw, it's like, I don't feel loved in my own home, mm. I don't feel appreciated or understood in my own home, I don't feel like I'm worth like anything, anything yeah. more than just my gender yeah. and like the fact that I can like reproduce or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I have these ambitions in my heart. Like I wanna, I wanna leave. These are the things I wanna do. But I, in order for me to to do that, to leave, I have to like. There's no fate. Like there's no plan B. Like yeah. it has to be this. <laughs> it has to, yeah. So that's a lot for uh, a young person to be dealing mm. with. Like yeah. it's a lot. Um, yeah. So you obviously did get grades. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what happened then? So I got the grades uh, to get into UCL for biomedical sciences, yeah. but I didn't get the grade to get into medicine. medicine yeah. So I was devastated yeah. because my dream was to go to Liverpool to do medical school. So you wanted to move far yeah, as well? Yeah, and I moved, I, I missed out um, chemistry by one point mm. and that would have got me in. And I remember my friend, we were frantically calling Liverpool, like Mary, she's like, Mary, call there, call there. I'm like, I'm trying to call there, but nothing's going through. And obviously, everyone had got their grades so people are going to be calling to say can i do this or you know um, make changes or whatever they could do but we weren't going through at the time so i remember coming back home and i was crying um my parents response is why why are you crying what's there to be crying for you know you won't miss out on anything 
Can I just pause on that for a second? I don't know, I just had this thought about, you know, like you said, now you've studied. Mm. Do you feel like a lot of, do you, have you seen your, pa- you know, like you talk about compassion. Mm. Have you seen your parents in your studying? You know, like, do you get what I mean by that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have uh, you seen yeah, your parents yeah, understand, like, yeah. maybe why are they? Why are they? Absolutely, the way absolutely. They I think even before my studies. Yeah. Because before my studies, I was doing a lot of reading. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, especially when I look at, when they talk about their history, I'm not obviously going to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But when they talk about what they've been through as well, there is a lot where I'm just like, first of all, I have to see my parents as human beings, yeah. you know? Essentially, they're human beings. Yeah. And obviously the things that they're exposed to is not as resourceful as what I'm exposed to. I, to be, to be honest, I should be grateful for the fact that I could actually make changes to myself mm. rather than replicating the same mm. um, behaviors that they have experienced, yeah. you know? And like I said before, you know, with human beings it's very easy to be influenced and replicate the same experience because it's what you know yeah. it's very difficult to unlearn what you've learned for how many years mm-hmm. and to say to my parents oh you know unlearn things that you've been doing for 40 years that's really difficult mm-hmm. and that's really really demanding mm-hmm. even though yes they should know better but when you're stuck in a, an environment and you constantly keep re- reproducing the same environment it's very hard to come out of it you know, so for me, I am compassionate towards them. I, to be honest, I could say I still love them yeah, as parents, yeah. you know, because I, I, I understand. And, and the world is hard. Yeah. Like me experiencing and having to go through, through a lot myself, yeah. the world is very hard yeah. to go through, you know. And especially if you don't have that support, it's really, really, really yeah. difficult. And it's very, very difficult to... to, to, to to have the awareness to listen to people telling the truth or people trying to guide you and even knowing the difference. Some people don't know the difference. Yeah. You know, I, I found it difficult sometimes knowing the difference between being helped and um, being insulted or not being helped. Yeah. You know, it was it was it's a very, very difficult yeah. thing, especially when it comes when you don't know how to trust people because you haven't had that parental trust yeah. or love or yeah. nurturing. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Okay, so let's go back to so you need to didn't get into obviously you were devastated. You didn't get into Liverpool. Yeah. As you wanted to, but you got into UCL, which is a great uni. Yes. Like, it's a, it's an I'm amazing not complaining. Uni. Like, do you know what I mean? So it was a slightly different, direct, yeah, like slightly yeah, different direction. way of getting to you know, yeah. the same sort of dream that you had. Yeah. Um. So it was it was during the time that you stopped athletics, right? Yeah. 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 So what made you come to that decision as well? <sighs> to be honest, during that time, again, I didn't have the support, and I just felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over again with no support yeah. and not really doing well and I yeah. thought let me just focus in in your uh, mind was it a break or was it I'm not doing athletics anymore it was I'm not doing athletics okay. anymore yeah. I, yeah, I quit yeah. 100% because yeah it was just really difficult and I think a lot of people were expecting a lot out of me yeah. because they saw the talent there but there's no point having talent if there's no resources mm. and it's very hard, like, yeah, really hard yeah really really difficult yeah. and even now it's still a struggle yeah. So, um, <coughs> as a kid, where you have, you can't afford to work, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're trying to go into uni and do other things, it was really difficult. So I said, okay, I think the best thing for me right now is just to focus on one thing mm-hmm. and try and get through that, and then maybe see what happens. So you did, you did very well. Yeah, uni. yeah, yeah. Um, what did you get? So I ended up with a two two honors, yeah. which I was two percent off a um, two one. Yeah. But again, a lot of family issues yeah. back and forth. That was the year that I was estranged and still trying to find myself. So not only was I trying to learn the course, I was trying to learn about myself and how to navigate through a world that wasn't very friendly to people that are by themselves. How, um, in terms of your, your siblings, yeah. are you still close to them? I haven't, I haven't seen them for a well, yeah, well, long well, time. But do you feel like you had, I guess, Surrogate family. Was there anyone that you felt like was close family? So I, I used to hang, uh, I used to um, go to my friend's house called Sasha, yeah. and I would go to them sometimes. But I used to, I used to stay with them, and yeah. they were absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. I think from there on, I did um, understand a different perspective, a different perspective. Um, but they were really, really good. They were nurturing. They actually came from this family. Um, yeah. Also Frank Adams also took me as family. Frank, you're amazing. We love yeah. you. I <laughs> we love, love you. Frank. I love you so um, much. <laughs> okay, so uni 
Jason Carty's group, mm-hmm. Carl Carty, based in Sutton. Uh, they were based at Sutton. And um, you know when you start and your brain's like, oh, I've been missing all of this. <laughs> 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 I was just like, oh my God, what's this feeling? Like, yeah. oh, like I was, it, I felt like me again. Mm. Like the young me that used to just run around in circles and enjoy it, you know? And um, when we started, when I started doing the runs, and I just felt myself going back into that routine. Listen, guys, training. Mary is just a. I don't even know what to call you. Like, Mary is just a, a machine. <laughs> like, she can just run. Like, she can just run. Like, literally. <laughs> and it really makes sense why 400 has become your event. Because you just need to Thank be you. strong. For that event. Really I didn't but choose yeah, that race, it chose me. Yeah, it's she. But okay, but you so you've come back and you're under 23 at this point, isn't it? Yeah. So, how. how so, obviously. It says when you came back to your happy place, you're the part of you that was, I guess, yeah. revived again. It's yeah. like, this is this is part of who but I was my well. last. It was my last year of uni when I went back, and I wasn't competing. I didn't start competing until 2013. Okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, one year after, um, yeah, one year after I'd started athletics. But I, I was. So you actually started competing when you were officially a senior. Yeah. Wow. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I started competing when I was a senior. I yeah. literally jumped straight into the deep end. And um, so, 20, so yeah, 2012, I remember watching the 2012 Olympics. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. I, I, you know, yeah. I wish I was there. Because yeah. um, I remember, yeah, I wish I was there. And then um, I thought, okay, let me try and train and see where I can go with this. So... Guys, I don't know what with the helicopters today. Like, <laughs> seriously? Like, seriously? <laughs> it's like okay. Uh, between when you come back, 2013 and yeah. 2019, what have been the absolute highlight for you? In oh, athletics? okay. So, um, so for me was my first ever senior champs. Um, I'm coming ninth overall. What year was that? That was. Oh, it was 2013. My first year, yeah. I came ninth, and I literally missed that on the finals. Uh, then 2014, I ran my PB because I, I hadn't done anything. Um, I came fourth, and I ran no, I came, yeah, I ran 52 eight. Yeah. Then I, the following year, when I moved to Bristol to try and oh, achieve, yeah. yeah, so I moved to Bristol. That's another story. I'm telling you, we could be here for hours. Yeah, yeah. That was another story in itself, but. Um, I ended up right, coming fourth in that one, and I. Uh, but I didn't get selected for the team. Yeah. So I was always throughout You've always my whole season. Been there. I've always been. Like in even the finals. this, like this year, you came fourth again. Yeah. But unfortunately, you weren't selected for the world championship yeah. which is happening at the end of this beginning of the end of this month. So you've yeah. been there. I've always you been know? top four. I've always been with top top five. Yeah. I've always been. There was only one year where I came sixth. Yeah. But I've always been, been there, in the which finals. is really amazing. Always, um, yeah. Have done indoor shows too, right? Yeah, I, I did indoor, so yeah. So, biggest highlight from 2017 onwards is when I officially made the team. Oh gosh, <laughs> Woo! I know I was so happy because I was working in immunology and the work was just full on. What, immunology? Was, so, <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, I was working in the immunology department, so I would call it the, um, the police protection, body protection. So they police the body, they look for, you know, foreign um, like bacteria and viruses that are not good for the body. Yeah. Uh, they call them antigens. So um, they'll fight that all off. So they literally are the protectors of the body. Yeah. So um, it was more like immunology and proteins yeah. as well. So protein concentration. Different, different so 2017 of course. Yeah. yeah, so 2017, whilst I was in the intense lab, 
um, and coming back from Bristol. So Bristol, I came back 2015. Yeah, so 2016, 2017. Um, I was living with Frank at the time. That was it. So I was living with Frank, um, and I made the team. It was the most amazing point in my life because initially I wasn't supposed to run. Yeah. And uh, one of the other athletes, they were injured. So like, okay, Mary, you're going on the team. I was like, oh, oh, showcase, let me run. Yeah. So I remember I remember being on the start line. I was so nervous because I didn't know how I was going to perform. What leg was you on? I was third leg, yeah. yes, third leg. And I remember standing there. And I, I remember someone pointing out to me that the um, commentator was like, Mary's looking rather nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was so nervous because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to, I just I was I was just like okay once you get the bucket just run. Just that's, run. That's, that's, and that's what you've been good at since you were a kid. <laughs> yeah. Just run. Just run. Yes. <laughs> so um, as soon as I got the baton, just ran off. And I remember the Polish athlete behind me, and, and she took, she's a really good friend of mine, and she was just right behind me. I was like, no, I won't allow you to catch me. No, I have to I have to win it. And um, Overall, we ended up getting a silver, which I was just like, oh my gosh, my so first amazing. ever yeah, senior, and I got a, a yeah. silver, uh, a silver medal. And then um, afterwards, we had the uh, European Team Champs, where I ran a PB, and I came sixth in that race. I ran a PB, and everyone plus myself, we were so surprised. We were just like, Whoa! <laughs> I remember the GB doctor being like, oh my god. <laughs> That was that was such a big highlight because I think more so it was giving me that confidence yeah. in myself that I never had yeah. for such a long time. And I started to believe in myself and I started to understand myself, understand my limits, understand what I can and can't do. Even the times where I was rejected like the during major championships, mm -hmm. it just fueled the fire mm -hmm. a lot more. It wasn't a thing where I just felt like, oh that's it, I give up. It was like, no Mary, let's keep going, let's mm -hmm. keep doing what you need to do. Let's keep fixing things, let's keep changing things, let's keep making small changes. And let's not focus on making the tea event, that's all there is. Let's focus on building yourself up, mm -hmm. developing yourself, mentally and physically, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mentally more so, yeah. you know, building up your character. Who are you as a person? Mm -hmm. What are your values? What mm -hmm. do you stand for? And I think even now I'm still exploring what I stand for, exploring my values, exploring what's right and wrong for me, you know? When people do wrong to me, rather than like, okay, I'm gonna do wrong to the next person, or, you know, I can't wait to take revenge or anything like that. It was more so, okay, well, these are characters that I don't want to project on someone, and these are characters that I need to be aware of, because, again, when you see flaws in other people, when people do wrong to you, you also have to remember that it's also in yourself, you know, like, no one's exempt from doing wrong to other people, mm -hmm. but you are able to be aware and to make the choices to do those wrongs to mm -hmm. other people. And it's about making the wrong choices. And I think when you receive this gift, you realize actually, I have to change and I have to be aware yeah. of I should be more aware of how I feel I like what I'm hearing you say, and I feel like I was gonna ask you to, if we have, we've got, let's say we've got a young, a, a young person, let's say they, maybe they're like, they could be any age, but I, I wanna, that maybe the 16 to mm. 19 bracket and they can really relate to a lot of the things you said in terms of from family and to not really feeling like they've had the support around them mm. um what one piece of advice or one thing looking on the retrospect what would be the one thing if because you shared a, a lot of things but what one thing would you pull out for them that they can take to help them as they're moving forward i would say believing in yourself is probably the biggest thing i think that's something even i'm learning now it, when you don't believe in yourself or when you over believe in yourself it leads to the same circumstances mm -hmm. you end up not doing well you know i think when you are in the middle where you understand who you are fundamentally understand your limits understand who what you can achieve and what you can can't do because then you're able to talk to people about this is who i am these are my boundaries this is what i can and can't do and also you're able to push yourself where you know, actually, I, I know I'm good at what I'm doing. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. It's, for me, the big, it's believing yourself because you're gonna be surrounded by people that do not believe you mm -hmm. at all. And it, it, it may not be like you've done something wrong. It could be just looking at you. They could just look at you and think, no, she's, she's not capable. 
you could just make one mistake and be like, oh, that's that's all you are and that's all you ever will be. That is not the truth. Like, understand that people's opinions should just be taken with a pinch of salt, you know? It shouldn't be something that, you know, takes over you because that's not you. You know who you are. You've lived with yourself for how many years? It's about time you're aware of who you are and believe in it. And you have to believe in yourself. That would be my take on that. So find out what your strengths are and really pursue those those things and the things that are that you're not good at, the things that um what do you call it? Where you lack or your even your yeah, your weaknesses, even your yeah. mistakes, not letting that to become your identity. Yes, what you're yeah, saying. Don't let yeah. your weaknesses become your identity, but allow and don't let your strengths, like you said, make puff your head yeah, up so big yeah, yeah. but use your strength as a way to continue to find out yeah, who you are for, and to yeah. grow and to develop you know, always I feel like that's open. really what you're yeah. thank you so much Mary. like you said there's so much we really 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 could go into with Mary there's a lot she's gone through a lot of things and as she said earlier in terms of resilience and I just really pray that you know you continue to that you'll continue on the journey and discover who you are you know what your gifts are and your fullness course. and all that kind of stuff so thank you so much for sharing and being so honest we're going to finish this interview with a hot 10. Oh, I'm going to yes. ask you hot 10 random questions. Oh, wow. And then we're going to, that will be the end of our interview. So, what's your favourite season? Season? Of the year. Oh, okay. Um, Actually, this season. Oh, cool. This season's what been we in? T- 2019. Oh, you're saying athletic season. Okay, you can answer it like that. I bet oh. it's like spring, summer, autumn, winter. Oh, oh, what's us? Uh, summer, summer. But 2019 summer. has been her favourite season. Yeah, but summer as well. <laughs> Morning or evening? Morning. Uh, would you class yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? Both. How many siblings do you have? Two. Two brothers? Yeah, two brothers. Uh, would you rather listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video? Oh, that's a hard one. Podcast though. Podcast. Really? Podcast, yeah. Podcast, yeah. Uh, can you touch your nose with your tongue? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite colour? Blue. Would you rather wear the same outfit every day for a whole year or eat the same meal every day for a whole year? Oh, same outfit. Same outfit. Yes. Uh, I like variety of food. <laughs> <laughs> I love food. How old were you when you learned to ride a bike? Oh, nine? Nine? Yeah. Right. And the last one, I want you to fill in the blank. I always wanted to blank and now I have or am. I've always wanted to... Oh my gosh, goodness. Um, this is a hard one. I've always wanted to represent GB and oh, now I'm yay. representing GB. Oh, yeah. well done. That's so good. <laughs> see, I like that last one because it just lets people see like the fulfillment of something because yeah. sometimes you don't even take the time to see what have I always wanted to do that I've actually yeah, achieved. And yeah. what you said earlier, anyway, yeah. before we came on camera in terms of looking back and seeing what you yeah, have achieved back and yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, Mary. I hope no you guys worries. have enjoyed this interview and I pray that there's something that you could take away from it, whatever that may be. Um, So as I always say, guys, let the past motivate you, but use the present to create history. And I'll see you next time. Bye.